This is an exclusive. This is an exclusive. Oh, leave it on the real. Leave it in the real. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the pound for pound best radio show around the world. It's Leave It In the Ring. We got Superman Roy Jones Jr. on the line. Roy, you on, brother? Hey, what's happening with y'all? How y'all doing? Good, man. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Here y'all talking about some real instant fights coming up. That's very interesting. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> well, hey, you got a fight, very interesting fight that's coming up right now against the executioner, Bernard Hopkins. You know, uh, obviously, you, you know, I know you're not happy about the last success of your last fight with Danny Green. When that happened, did, did you right away, I mean, if that had to pop in your head like, oh, there goes the payday with Bernard Hopkins. Or there goes the fight that, that he's been wanting and you've been wanting to show the world. Yeah, the fight that he's been wanting is what I was like. I said, well, you know, it's bad, but now I got to come back. I really wouldn't think, didn't think the fight was over. I just said, figured I had to come back and go ahead on and get this dude to do it fairly and beat him. Then I'll fight Bernard. But, or then I said, well, maybe, or maybe Bernard might want to fight him, but I doubt it because when you see they didn't treat me fair, you know they ain't going to treat him no better. So, I mean, it's like, why would you take that stupid chance? When you see, I now afterwards, I wouldn't take it if I knew it was going to be like that. I thought I was going to get a fair shake. I didn't think they were going to let him wrap his hand like they let him wrap his hand. So, but it's all good. So immediately I thought, well, you know, I ain't going to keep on arguing with people. I, I can't try it out the country thing again. I've been avoiding it. I faced that. I dealt with that demon. Still the same. I ain't messing with it no more. So I was going to call it a day. But then when he said, no, I know I know how I go this way. I wouldn't go out the country. And I still want to fight him. I'm like, okay, well, if you just still want this, then I realize, you know, hey, he think you old. You can't take a punch no more. When he's older than you, he thinks that, you know, he got you now, so that's why he still want to fight you. So I was like, ah, okay, now I get it. So, you know, I was like, well, the one thing I love to do is prove people wrong, so why not? Roy, let me, let me ask you this, you know, because first off, you're a very beloved fighter from a lot of people. Some very, very dedicated uh, uh, fans to you for your legacy and everything that you've done for the sport. Okay, uh, you when ever since you've stepped in, you have awed a lot of people. There's never been another Roy Jones of likings of, of the way you carry yourself and what you do in the ring. But even some of your own 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 hardcore fight fans are saying, Roy, you're ruining your legacy. Why not retire? Why not give up now? Stop, stop stepping in there. Well. I mean, you know, even those that hard fans, I really appreciate their support and their love for me and the fact that people love you, you know what I mean? When people love you, they don't want to see nothing bad happen to you. However, the things that you do and you succeed in your career, they can't undo those things. I mean, I can go out and knock Bernard Hopkins out come April 3rd, which I'm going to do, and that does not stop the fact that he was just one of the first guys to have, like, one of the only guys to have 20 title defenses of a middleweight crown. You can't destroy the things that he done. So the things I'm doing now, I mean, they're cool. Some of it's not always in my favor, but at the same time, if you wake up, you're happy, you're healthy, what would you rather me go do? You'd rather see me go join uh, UFC and start doing that? I mean, I'm going to do something because I'm happy, I'm feeling good, I'm capable of doing things still, so I'm going to want to do something. But what would you rather see me do, something, something good or something bad? I mean, you ask people all the time, people say, well, go do this or go do that. Well, that don't, that's not fun to me. That's, I don't enjoy doing that. I still enjoy doing this. And as long as I can do it, why not? Now, if I was going to the gym and I couldn't hold my own with the spar partners anymore, or I couldn't dominate like I used to dominate, then you're right. I would call it a day. But it's like I always tell people, only God can make that decision for me. And anybody else, if you let anybody else make the decision for you, then something wrong with you because nobody else gave me the talent. God did. So I think he's the only one that should be able to tell me, all right, son, now it's time you stop. Well, let me ask you this, you know, because... You know, now that's later in in your career, you've never been in this position before of being the underdog. Does that motivate you a whole lot more now? I mean, never being, never tasting the 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 that fact of being the underdog. How is that? I was against I was against James Toner, and I think I was against John Ruiz, but I like being underdog. That's why I live at. That's what that's what adds credibility to my game. When I'm the underdog, now I got a reason to fight and a reason to perform. If I'm not the underdog, then I ain't got a reason to perform. So I'd rather be the underdog. Roy, does it get underneath your skin a little bit to see or watch Bernard Hopkins with that grin on his face when he talks about you and says, this is revenge, this is revenge? You know, no, it doesn't. I mean, like I said, it's, it's quite, it just shows me, like I've been telling people, first thing, you know, the guy, is he got an issue with me that he can't get over. Second thing is he's so happy now because he thinks that my career is done. He thinks I'm done as a fighter. He thinks I have nothing left in the tank. And so he's come out and wake me out now. He thinks that's why now it's the perfect time. If it wasn't that, he wouldn't be fighting me still. So it doesn't bother me. I'm happy to see. I know exactly what's on his mind. And I'm glad to see that. 
<laughs> is there bad blood? I mean, is there an actual bad blood between you guys, or is it's this a bad blood something? between him? And, it's a bad blood between him and me, not me and him. My only bad blood is I want to see him bleed. That's the only bad blood I got. <laughs> his bad <laughs> blood is <laughs> his bad blood. He's been, you know, a critic of my career the whole time, man. Well, he's not really a critic. He'll tell the truth. He know, he knows both uh, Hall of Fame nominees soon as we hang it up, and, and he's not. He's not the kind of guy who, I mean, you know, Bernard is Bernard. He's going to make everything sound as bad as he can. He's going to always try to get under your skin. He's going to try to take every initiative to bother you, to cause whatever kind of harassment he can, just like he do everybody else. But he knows with me it doesn't work. Our birthdays are a day apart, so I know it's all his games before he starts them. What is it about that Bernard Hopkins right now that you see you could take advantage of? Same thing I did when I was younger. He's still Bernard Hopkins. I'm still Roy Jones. He ain't me. He can't deal with me. He don't know how to deal with me. And I'm going to do the same thing to him I did then. Ain't nothing much different. How did the whole 60-40 thing come about, uh, you know, Roy? Because the last time we had you on Leaving the Ring, you said, hey, I'll, I'll give him whatever you want. It's not me. You know, everybody always want to take the credit. But if you go back and think about it, since that interview we did in 98, I was saying 60-40. Then I had made a song called 6040. Then I came on now and said, you know what, I'm tired of the talk. Long time ago, but about two years ago, I think, maybe three years ago, I said, I'm tired of the talk. If he want to fight me, he said, 60 to the winner, 40 to the loser, or I don't want to talk no more. So I've been coming with 6040 the whole time. This is nothing new. I've been saying 6040 the whole time. I didn't care how we did it, 6040. I just said 6040. I'll take 60 to the winner, 40 to the loser. I would have took that anyway. So they said, okay, let's do it like this. 60 to the knockout winner. To the knock, I lose if there's a knock. I say, all right, that's fair. So I take that. So I'm cool because I know that, you know, he thinks that, like I said, he thinks he can land a shot now, hopefully behind my head and knock me out. That's what he's hoping for. And I'm looking forward to that too. So, I mean, I love it. And it's no problem. But I was the one who came with the 6040. I've been saying 6040 the whole time. You go back and check the record, you see there's a song called 6040. So who you think came with 6040? By him saying that he's, he's going to knock you out, because he even said, you know, I'm going to punish him and then I'm going to knock him out. So, what do you think about that, man? I mean, you, I mean, you're sitting there and you're listening to this man say this about you because, you know, he's basically basing himself off what ha has happened in the past with you. You know, exactly. what, does that, what does that do for you? Not a thing. It doesn't do a thing. I mean, maybe look at him and realize how stupid he has to be. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit more about that Danny Green situation. You know, we heard a lot of it coming out of it, you know, about the hand wraps and problems, you know, with your guys getting back there and seeing what's going on. Can you kind of just give us the details on that, you know, if you knew about that heading into the ring that night? No, I didn't, I didn't know totally. They, they told, I said, what's wrong with this here with his hand wrap? I said, what's wrong with this? And now we're going to get it fixed. We're going to get it fixed. And they wouldn't tell me no more about it, which was smart because they got 18,000 fans. If I, if, I, if I did withdraw, we probably wanted to riot and everything else. But uh, when, they told my, when they told the commission, they said, we need to see his hand wrap one more time because the guy who watched him rap. So he used illegal tape, illegal gauze. He used a gauze that had an uh, adhesive on it, which is totally illegal in the ABC rules. He used five-inch tape. It was like four different things that he did that was totally illegal. The guy complained about all four of them. The commission let all four of them slide. So the guy came and got my managers and said, hey, this guy had his hands wrapped illegally. Y'all need to go stop that. So they went to go stop it, and they wouldn't let my people back in. So when they wouldn't let me and my people said, well, if y'all ain't going to let us check his hand wrap or change his hand wrap, Roy not fight. They said, yeah, well, if Roy don't fight, we'll disqualify Roy. So at that point, my people were like, wow, what the heck we do? So they, I guess at that point, they said, you know what, we're just going to keep it low, let him go on, and you know, we have to do, we have to deal with this at another time. Because right now, we got 18,000 people out here, wait, we can't tell them not to come out. So I guess, you know, they took this, what they thought was a smart approach and said, no, go ahead. So we came on out, you know. After the shot, you know, I was like, when I saw it, I was very surprised, first of all, to be down from a shot to the back of the head that quick. I'm like, wait a minute. You know, that's, that kind of shot don't bother me. So, but when I got up, I was good. So he was trying to think he could, holding my head, trying to hit me. He couldn't hit me with it. He couldn't even hurt me no more. So when he realized that he's so frustrated from trying to grab my head and everything else, the referee officer stopped the fight. I said, what you stopping the fight for now? It's too late now. I'm all right. What you stopping it for? So I know Denny Green had punched himself out. And then I realized, you know, then they went back and they showed me pictures and showed me the box that they took from him because my guy that went back to watch him rap, he took the box that the gauze came out of, which is also illegal to rap with any kind of gauze that's in a box. You don't rap with your hand with gauze that's in a box. In box, everybody know that. And it stretched, and the, the gauze hair also stretched. And they had an adhesive on them. So you don't wrap your hand with nothing, with nothing like that. That's really making a cast. And when I looked at the pictures, he basically had a cast on and after the fight, if you look at it, he never took his gloves off in the ring because he had the cast on it. Somebody would have caught it. So, I mean, you know, it was all good, but 
I just, you know, you hate that you had to become a victim to that, but all those type things do to me is make me stronger. You know, they did that to me in the Olympics, so they just make me stronger. Now, when you fought John Ruiz, after you after you won, you won the heavyweight title, you know, and you came back and fought Tarver, you said you just weren't as motivated. Would you say that this Hopkins fight is the most motivated you've been since the Ruiz fight? It'll be the most motivated that I have been probably since the James Tony fight. Is that just because of Bernard Hopkins? I mean, what is it specifically about Bernard that makes you so motivated just, for this just, fight? Just, just, just because of, I know he's so jealous of me, and he'd give anything he could to beat me, and I refuse to let it happen. I know a lot of Puerto Rican friends got a lot of beef with Bernard Hopkins because of the way he came and did y'all country, so I'll take care of that too. <laughs> Roy, if, if you know, you're going to get in with Bernard Hopkins, if you're successful against Bernard Hopkins, okay, would you get Danny Green back into the ring? Yeah, I'm going to be successful with Bernard Hopkins, and I will get Danny Green back in the ring, in the ring yes. If you get him back into the ring, is it going to be in the States? or? Yeah. Well, 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 I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a crybaby. I can either fight in the United States with illegal hand wrap, or if you want to fight in Australia with illegal hand wrap, I can do that too, but just let me have some illegal hand wrap too. <laughs>